Welcome back everyone. This is Iman Hassan and in this lecture we will start creating our first function using the Azure portal and building our hello world function. You will be surprised how easy and simple this is and in a few minutes you will get to have an efficiently hosted and executed code ready. In order to create an Azure function, first you will need to create a function app which acts as the context of execution for your functions. Then in the function app, we create and execute our function. So let's not wait anymore and start exploring this amazing feature. So first we will sign into Azure portal through portal.azure.com. Then we will find in the left hub here, the function app. We can click on it directly or just click on add new resource over here then search for function app and you'll find it first thing in the list so we click on it and hit create so before we start filling this form we need to understand the difference between function app and the function itself a function app lets you group functions as a logic unit for easier management deployment and sharing of resources and as mentioned before the function app is the host for execution for your functions. You may say that since we have the code added serverless, but it still needs a host for it to execute. So think of the function app as the alternative to run your code serverless with the advantage of being able to group and manage functions related to each other. I also need to point out an important thing, which is the plan we will be using while creating our function app. You can either choose consumption plan or app service plan. I really like the comparison mentioned on Microsoft Azure's official documentation site, where it says that the consumption plan automatically allocates compute power when your code is running. So your app is scaled out when needed to handle load and scaled down when code is not running. So you don't have to pay for idle VMs or reserve capacity in advance. While in the dedicated app service plan, your function apps run on dedicated VMs on basic, standard, premium, and isolated SKUs, which is the same as other app service apps, which means that the function's host can be always running. So you need to choose carefully which one is better for you according to your business case so that you can use your functions with the lowest cost possible. Another thing we need to set up while creating the function app, which is a storage account. And it should support Azure Blob, queue, files, and table storage, which could be used while working on a specific function, triggers, and bindings. Okay, so let's go back to filling our form to create the function app. So first thing you need to name your function app and this name should be unique among all other function apps and it will tell you whether the name is already used or not so as you see here i tried different names but it says not available so let's write hello serverless function and great it is available so let's move on for the subscription it will select by default your current azure subscription but if you have more than one subscription, you will need to choose the one you want to attach the function to. And the resource group will contain all the resources you create under one group and under same plan. So we will create a new one to better keep track of our resources related to our functions. Then you will set the operating system, but note that the consumption plan is only available for Windows. So let's keep it as it is. Then choose the plan, the consumption plan. Then we will choose where the function app is to be hosted. And of course, you need to choose the closest location to the users of your application to get better response and performance. For the demo purposes, we will keep the default region as it is. And then we will choose the runtime stack as JavaScript, which is based on Node.js which we will be using for writing our code in the functions. And as I mentioned, we need to create storage account or use an existing one. So we will create a new one to be dedicated to our Azure functions work. 
Then we will choose whether to enable or disable application insights, which is a tool that helps you provision and monitor applications and have very powerful features. It is out of the scope of our course, but we will keep this the default as it is. And then finally we hit create. Then we will wait here to get the notification that the creation and deployment of our resource is done. We can bin this function app to our dashboard to be able to go directly to it as soon as we log into the portal. And then here we will click on go to the resource view and select our function app. And here it is up and running and ready to execute functions. You can create functions directly from this button or through this plus icon. So let's try the button here. And we have different options to create our function. So let's try the portal option. Then we will choose whether it is a timer app or a webhook API that would be triggered whenever it receives an HTTP request. So we will choose this one and it generates a template for us with a sample code like the one you see in front of you. So let's have a look in the code here. JavaScript functions must be exported via module.exports and your exported function should be the only export from its file. This exported function must have the context included as a parameter. Then you may add any other optional arguments. The runtime uses a context object to pass data to and from your function and to let you communicate with the runtime. So in here you have a request parameter as well, which will hold the request body received. Also note that the context could be named with whatever name you like, but it must always be your first parameter. So in this sample here, it checks if the query string has a name value. It will send a response with hello name. And as you see here, the response is in the context object here and also logging to the console is also within the context object. And in the else statement here, it mentions that if the name is not found in the query string, it will send a response stating to send the name to the query string. So for simplicity, let's just pass hello world to the response like this, and let's hit save, then run, and we can explore the response in the right here. And there you go pretty simple. So what about the configuration? Where does it come from? Well, if you go to the view files tab here, you will find out the JS file we're working on and a function.json. And this is the configuration file for the function. So let's have a look at it. So as you see here, it states the bindings containing the authorization levels, whether it is anonymous or function where you have to send the key and the allowed HTTP methods. And as we walk through our coming demos, we will discover more items added to this configuration file. And down here, you will see the log window containing the trace while your code is running. So as you see, it is all simple and easy and very well structured. So you can find everything you need in front of you straightforward. So now that we explored creating our first function and all the necessary configurations to start through the Azure portal, 